Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and Zygu just came out with an upgrade for the firmware to the X6100. Now it fixes a few things and it adds a couple of things. We're gonna talk about all those things and we're gonna take a look at the features to see if those issues were fixed and if the features they added are functional. Let's get started. So to get started, we are talking about version 1.1.0. At the time of recording, this is a very, very new radio. It's only been in my hands for about four or five days. So the first thing that we're going to check out is the optimization of the system audio configuration to eliminate distortion at high volumes. The best thing I could do is I found a signal. Let's turn it all the way up with no filters on. Let's turn on noise reduction. Noise reduction sounds really good on this radio, by the way. Anyway, I don't really hear any distortion. You know, I might have heard a little distortion when there was no filters on. And then when I put the filters on, I think it's re-enabled me to say that maybe it wasn't quite distortion. And if it was, it was very faint. Let's move on to issue number two. For number two, they're talking about optimizing the frequency spectrum display effect and optimize the automatic adjustment function of the reference level. Uh, yeah, so I looked at the manual real quick, and there's no reference to a frequency spectrum display effect. So they might be talking about this whole thing in general. Uh, we're going to go through all the settings that are there and, and see if anything has changed. So uh, I'm going to click on radio, um, excuse me, I'm going to go to general button, and then I'm going to click on display settings. Here we are, we have all our different things. And uh, the first one is RF, Spectrum Display Average. If we click on this, we could actually adjust this up and down. And you could see what happens is the waterfall signals get slower or faster, depending on how we adjust it. I technically, or really, I'd like mine fast. Uh, but that's all personal preference. If we click next, we're going to go to the RF Spectrum Display Reference Level. And this might be what they were talking about in the firmware update uh, notepad. So here we are, and when I do this here, you can see I, I'm introducing more no noise into my waterfall. Noise I already had, I'm just showing it or displaying it on the waterfall. You know, I like mine probably around down there. All right, so in display settings, the next one we have, we're going to skip over because this is a new function added, function six. And we'll talk about it a, a little bit because I'm not sure that that works perfectly either. Next one is the WF ref or the waterfall reference offset level. So let's take a look at what that is and see if that's changed at all. If I increase this, you're gonna see I add uh, a more color into the waterfall display. Now, a lot of people will adjust this to their likings. You know, I like to go darker where I have dark here and I can see the signal a little bit better here and even these fine signals here. So that doesn't even seem to have changed that much. If anything, it did change. It's a little darker, so maybe you could see it a little bit better. But uh, that, again, personal preference. Actually, for now, I'm just going to leave it probably around negative two. And we're going to go back in display settings. We're going to go to the next one, which is the audio spectrum display average. And when we click this uh, and we adjust it, you're going to see that that could slow down or speed up. Cool. But again, I don't, I don't see these differences, not seeing they're not there. And finally, uh, well, we have two more. The next one is the audio spectrum uh, display reference level. And what that is, is just like this. You can see how I got smaller and, and higher of a reference level. So, you know, keep it right there. And then finally, something I don't think has changed is your backlight level. And uh, we're at five now. That was one, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, I don't know. Again, that's uh, so number two, optimizing the frequency spectrum display effect and optimizing the automatic adjustment function for the reference level. I don't notice anything again. Number three, they allegedly fixed the issue of the indicator light when the radio is charging when turned off. So I've actually had this off for a little bit of time. I've lost 0.1 volt. It should be enough for it to charge, right? So let's turn this off and see if number three actually works correctly. Right now the radio is powered off. There's no indicator light. If I plug this in, I have a charging indicator light and that's cool. It works. 
there were people saying that that didn't work. And uh, again, that's probably one thing I didn't notice. But anyway, here we are. Let's move on to number four. Now, number four is they fix the issue of the antenna tuner. And this is where I start to have troubles or a little bit of an issue with with uh, their firmware update notes because it's not very detailed. And I reported an issue with the antenna tuner that the thing was weak on 160, especially with a USB-C plugged in. And so with them not being very detailed, all I could do was say, did they fix the issue of the antenna tuner that I reported? And we're going to find that out now. So let's go down to 160. And we're just going to tune up on 160. Now, fair enough, the antenna here that I have is only a 40 meter, you know, fan dipole. So there should be a little bit of a hard time tuning it, but the relays were clicking really slow. And uh, let's though see if it slows down even more with USB-C plugged in. All right, are we ready? Even slower. I'm going to unplug it. Speeds up a little bit. So was the issue with the antenna tuner fixed? My issue with the antenna tuner wasn't fixed, but if there's another issue about the antenna tuner that I'm not aware about, uh, maybe that was fixed. Let's move on to number five. Number five is that they fix the issue that unable to adjust internal and external microphone volume. And what I think they're referring to is the microphone gain, but uh, we'll find out. So if you click on uh, radio settings, there's two spots here for your internal mic gain and your handheld mic gain. Now, my logical way of thinking to test these was going to be to go through the audio recording setup. So to give you a little confirmation here, uh, I have my internal mic or my handheld mic gain up at 13, but I'm going to turn up the volume so you know I have volume. And when I do that, I'm going to click on message. And I'm going to click right here where it says uh, message one more time, which puts me into voice. And as I tap voice, I should be able to record right here. Now I'm going to hit stop real quick so you could hear the audio. Something's buggy. Uh, anyway, audio is on, right? And so what, I'm going to put these away and I'm going to try to record an audio recording. This is W9. This is W9FFF. This is W9FFF. Doesn't matter. So when I went ahead and did that, and it's still it's still actually picking up my microphone. I'm talking and it's not even recording. No problem. But let's see if it actually will play back what we recorded. Voice recording no longer works. So um, if they did something to, we'll call it, fix the internal mic gain and the external mic gain, uh, I don't think the the recordings work any longer. So let me know if you're having that issue as well. And if we could replicate it, maybe Shegub will fix it. But regardless, we could actually still test it now that I think about it. What we could do is uh, we're going to turn the mic gain down to two here, and we're going to go back into the voice recording, and I'm just going to start talking. And notice you can't hear me, even if I turn the volume up a little bit. You know, maybe you could hear me a little bit. This is uh, this is very a good level right here. Um, but then if I were to exit out of here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the mic gain up and close your ears. I'm going to actually... I'm going to warn you now, it's going to sound like Tank Radio when he gets on YouTube. Uh, so if we go back into here, this is a test, audio test, audio test. We're over-modulated, and the reason for it is because the mic gain does work. So good job, kudos on the mic gain. I can't test internal and external while I'm doing the recordings. Uh, so you're just going to have to take my word that the, uh, the mic gain actually is working. And as far as the recording issue, hopefully they'll take care of that here now. And actually, in order to help Shagu a little bit or Zygu a little bit, let's just test out the other settings. If we go to general, I was on auto mic, and now I'm on handle mic, okay? Same concept, same theory. My handle mic's gain is up to 26, and maybe we'll turn that down just a little bit. We're down to 20 now. Okay, now that we're in there, let's click on messages and try to record again. Uh, 
This is W9FFF, W9FFF testing, W9FFF clear. So obviously I wasn't transmitting or anything, but that's kind of a force of habit. So let's go ahead and hit play now and see what we hear. And the volume is on. I have my volume up. I didn't record any audio again. So let's try the build-in microphone. Well, build-in microphone's right here. But let's uh, give that a shot. So again, general, radio settings, handle. Uh, we're going to go to build-in. And then let's uh, let's adjust the mic gain on that too real quick. And with the internal mic gain set up to 15, let's jump back into the messages and try one more time. Now I am actually going to unplug the microphone uh, as well on this one, and we're going to just try a voice recording. This is W9, FFF, W9, FFF, W9, FFF, W9, FFF. I don't hear anything. It's not even recording at all. So it's not recording on the built-in functionality. It's not saving at all. And I think they messed up the voice recorder. Again, let me know if you're having those same issues. Nothing. Wait, of course, there's one more thing to do is plug the radio microphone back in. And again, even though we're on what would be our built-in microphone or our internal microphone, it's going to record on here. Boy, they messed this one up pretty good, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to messages, though, and see if it'll record. This is W9FFF testing. Still nothing. Unfortunate, really unfortunate, because I thought that was a cool feature. Our next uh, firmware feature is they added three levels of spectrum bandwidth adjustment. Now, they already had one, and it was 100K, meaning you have 50K on this side and 50K on this side from the center. Mm, let's just see what happens. If I go to the FFT span under display and I'm selected on it and I wanted to go down to 50 or 25, nothing happens. Well, if you want to go down from to 50 or 25, you have to hit the up arrow and vice versa. If you want to go up, you have to hit the down arrow. So we're in backwards land here. Anyway, let's bring it down to 25 and I show you this for a reason. You will notice my RF averaging is going to be zero, which means that we should see the waterfall display kind of going up and down pretty quick. I need to change one more thing here real quick. We're going to change that reference level. And there's a good signal right there. This is as fast as the waterfall will be at 25K. So, unfortunately, you know, uh, we can't speed it up anymore. We could slow it down even more. So, I guess if that's your thing right there, but I don't, I don't care for that. I wish it was a little bit faster when it was, when it was all the way down. And again, if we go over to a uh, hundred k span, uh, it'll be nice and fast. Fifty k. 50K is okay, right? 50K is not horrible, but then 25K, they really slow it down. Even the same thing with this too. If you want to go down to, or up to 100, you have to go backwards. So anyway, that's the uh, three levels of spectrum bandwidth that they added. And let's see, what is number seven? Ladies and gentlemen, we're down to the final two features slash fixes on this firmware upgrade. Number seven, though, is the low battery light indicator, which unfortunately I don't have a low battery, so I won't be able to show you today. In the future, I will make sure that I'm able to test it, and if there's any problems, I'll report back. Which brings us to number eight, and perhaps a really, really great feature added the kilohertz bit adjustment, clear the bits of 100 hertz and below. And I was scratching my head for a minute, but I figured it out. If you click on uh, fast and we're in the slow area now where we're, we're adjusting by the hertz, let's say I was on 
7339.3 like I am, and I hit the fast button to adjust by kilohertz, now it zeroes it out, whereas before it would go 2.3, 3.3, and so forth. So it just rounds up the, uh, the hertz to zeros. That, in a nutshell, is uh, the firmware feature updates of version 1.1 from Zygu on the X6100. Let me know. Do you think they're doing a good job? Do you think there's a lot more work to do on this? And uh, what kind of firmware implementations would you like to see? We'll continue testing this radio, continue putting out videos on it until uh, till there's nothing more to talk about. So until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel 73.